Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today, I'll be giving my commentary on Sister Wives, Season 19, Episode 1, A House Divided Cannot Stand. The episode opens with a tribute to Garrison. I really would have liked to see a little more than a black screen with some words, maybe a photo, maybe some flashbacks of Garrison, something more, but Something is better than nothing, and the show is very behind in filming, and they make that clear. So there's some really sad piano music as captions read that the show started filming in late 2022, and that Garrison passed away March 5th, 2024. So we are still two years or so behind with the filming, and we need to keep that in mind. So we get a reminder of the past season flashing back to Mary mentioning how Cody told her he had no desire to have a relationship with her. And Mary tells us in this flashback scene that Cody told her she could stick around if she wanted to to have a relationship with Robin and the kids, but he made it clear he wasn't having a marriage relationship with her anymore. It's done. Now, Mary really wants to tell her story. And after stifling her voice for so long, it's probably going to feel good for Mary to finally be heard, to tell her side from her perspective. So Cody's been running his mouth, dragging Mary like she's a dog, showing zero respect to her as the mother of his child season after season. So now Mary is going to run her mouth a little bit and she has every right to use her voice. Cody told all of his truths over and over and over about Mary. And maybe it's time that Mary should do the same. It's probably going to feel like a relief for her. Christine loves being divorced. She's glowing and she highly recommends divorce to anyone considering it. So we flash back in this preview scene to Kotex the diva pointing his finger in Janelle's face like a scorned woman asking her condescendingly if she understands that she lies. She's a liar. And he says that's why he calls her the Teflon queen, because of all her lies. This is during their really big fight as Janelle smiles in disbelief. She's smiling because she knows Cody is delusional, as she calmly states that she doesn't lie. And Janelle points out that she thinks it's wild that Cody thinks she's lying because she thinks he is manipulative, and she calls it out. Cody says he feels too many lines have been crossed, and he says he's given too much, and he doesn't want to live like this anymore. It's just too much. Next, they flash back to the picnic table scene with Mary and Cody and Robin, where Mary and Cody are breaking up for cameras. And of course, Robin makes it all about herself, as we recall. So Robin is in tears as Cody explains to her that when he married her, he made a pact with her, an agreement that she required of him in order to get married. They both agreed, Cody and Robin, if he was ever not in love with her, he wouldn't just sit there and be in a bad place with her. He wouldn't stay in a pathetic place with her. Cody says this is about what they each want and they all don't want the same things. So we flash back to Robin sobbing with not a tear actually shed, really reaching with her line about wanting that one to be on the patio with the grandkids. And she can't understand this. She can't understand. She can't understand how this could happen. Through very fake sobs. Now, Cody laments that the dream of being one big polygamist family is done. It's over. He makes it clear he doesn't talk to Christine, he and Janelle are separated, and he and Mary aren't exactly divorced yet, but they aren't exactly married. And Cody makes it clear he doesn't want to be in that marriage with Mary. He definitely wouldn't mind keeping the marriage with his money tree, though. A million times this season, we're going to see Cody go to Janelle asking, why can't we make this work? Why can't we make this work? Because Cody doesn't want to lose that money tree. Cody says the feelings from the family breakup are raw, and he questions who he is without his family. It's really shaken his identity. So now Cody's having a faux identity crisis. When just months before this, Cody referred to his family as the obstacles to his goals in life. But without his family, Cody doesn't know who he is. I guess monogamy with Robin wasn't all Cody dreamed it would be. 
Cody explains that they bought Coyote Pass over four years ago. They bought it as a family, and now there is a big payment due with the family falling apart. Cody wants to figure it out. If they don't pay off the land by the due date, they will lose all of it. And Robin thinks it's a stupid contract they got in. So Cody and Robin visit Coyote Pass, and Robin points out where her house would be, even though everyone knows Cody and Robin will never build there. Cody explains that Christine took the equity from her home, and she gave up her rights to Coyote Pass, and Christine says she did that because she wanted a clean break, and it was much easier on her to just let it go. So now Mary, Janelle, Robin, and Cody are on the hook for the land. Cody cynically reflects that this was their dream as a family, and he thinks now the dream is over. And he says they aren't one big family, now they are just people who own a property together. So Cody wants to divide it up, and Robin still has hope. Robin says Mary never made it very clear that she would definitely not want to live out there, so Robin thinks Mary still might want to live there. I would say it's over. Get over it, Goblin, and let Mary go. Let Mary find something. Let Mary find someone that makes her happy. Mary deserves peace and happiness too, and Goblin needs to let her go. Now, Mary explains that a week ago, she and Cody had this breakup conversation. So this season 19, episode one, is like a week after that. So they had that breakup conversation on Coyote Pass at that picnic table of doom, and Mary has known this was coming for the past decade or more, and Mary adds that for the past decade, Cody has pushed her away from him completely. He has pushed away from her emotionally 100%. So Mary says nothing has changed because they still have the spiritual marriage, and that is still intact. So Mary is going to be moving forward with terminating the marriage spiritually through her church, and that's going to take time. So Mary wonders why she would ever want to be tied to somebody eternally who doesn't want her. So Mary doesn't want somebody who doesn't want her. So Robin is telling Cody, you never know, maybe Mary will want to live there. And Cody tells Robin to be real. It's time for her to get real. He makes it clear Mary isn't interested in Coyote Pass, and he asks Robin if she really thinks Mary would want to live on the land if they lived there too. Cody knows it's delusional, and he's looking at Robin like she's a nut. But Robin adds, well, you never know, you never know. Robin worries that Cody might end up on the hook for the land, in my opinion. He might end up responsible for all of it if his exes want nothing to do with it. And now it's a liability on him. Notice he only wants to pay off the land and he wants group cooperation when it's down to the last minute, when it's down to the deadline. But let's remember, Janelle has mentioned the land for years and wanting to pay off the land for years. So Cody refused to even listen to Janelle. He would warn her if she mentioned wanting to pay off the land. So again, he would get angry anytime she would try to mention it, and he would get angry to try and manipulate Janelle into dropping it completely to keep him in a good mood. So Robin feels that Mary might still actually want to live there, and that's what she's hoping for. And in my opinion, it's all about money. She knows she needs Mary's cooperation to help pay this land off, and she's in La La Land if she thinks Mary would ever want to live there. Ultimately, they're all on the paperwork other than Christine, and they're all going to have to pay off the land and pony up that money. Obviously, Mary's never going to want to live there. It would be far too painful. Imagine how dehumanizing that would feel, especially after the way Cody treated her season after season. Why would Mary want anything to do with them or with Cody or Coyote Pass or any of it? Why? She's been dehumanized. Why would she go and willingly want to live there? Robin really must not respect Mary at all if she believes that's even a possibility. Now, Cody says Coyote Pass is a source of pain for him. He wants to get it over with. Mary says Cody led her to believe he would work on things by telling her when they moved to Flagstaff that it would be a new beginning for them. Mary says Cody led her to believe 
that he wanted to work on things and he let her on like that for years and years, for many years. Now, I do believe Robin definitely gave Mary lots of false hope, but Cody made it clear season after season just how much he resented Mary and just how much he was done with that marriage. He was cruel over and over and over and over. Not only did Cody distance as a husband over a decade ago, emotionally and intimacy wise, but we know he melted down Mary's ring and he told her she had no control over him anymore. So Mary knew Cody was cruel. Mary knew deep down inside that Cody didn't give a fuck about her. And she stayed knowing that, knowing all he said about her. So I don't buy that she just was let on, like she didn't know any better. She didn't know his heart really wasn't in it. And he was just telling her empty words. She was just clueless about it. She knew she ignored it and she stayed on with it. I believe she really believes in the spiritual side of this. And she was worried about the consequences of that. And so I think she knew better, but she just didn't want to deal with it. I think she knew and she accepted it. And I think she knew she didn't deserve it. She knew she deserved better. Obviously, no one deserves to be treated the way Cody treated Mary, whatever the situation. And at least now, Mary sees the light and Mary gets to tell her truth. I think she knew that Cody didn't give a fuck about her way, way, way early on. I think she tolerated it. Now, Cody gets that Mary feels like he gave her mixed messages. Cody says he started to really try and make the relationship work. And while he was doing that, he wondered why he was doing it because he knew he would never court Mary all over again. He would never date Mary all over again or as she is now, he would never wanna marry her again. So he questioned why he was putting that effort in. So Mary wonders why the hell Cody even married her. So Robin and Cody are sitting on Coyote Pass and Robin tells Cody every time she drifts off to sleep, she dreams and she sees Coyote Pass and she envisions her home on her piece of the property. She pictures Janelle's house and she pictures Mary's house and even Christine's house. So Cody tells Robin he thinks they should just sell. So we all know Robin loves that ugly ass goblin's lair she lives in. She took money off of Mary's Vegas proceeds. She took money off Janelle's Vegas proceeds to get in that house. She's legal wife. If she decides to leave Cody, she and her kids will never have to worry about financial security or getting their fair share. She has nothing to worry about and she's more than comfortable living off of the backs of her sister wives in that home. She has no desire to be on Coyote Pass and I dream this and I dream that and bullshit, 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 right? She doesn't give a fuck. She loves where she lives. Christine explains that she was dreading leaving Cody because she didn't want to be single at 50 halfway through her life and she didn't want to be alone for the rest of her life. But now she's single and she loves it. And of course we know Christine meets David not long after she's single and she ends up marrying him and she's very happy with him. But at this point, she loves being single and she's really starting to date and she's enjoying her life. Of course, Christine and David, they're married now. They're very happy together. But back then, Christine was newly single and her relationship with David progressed very quickly. And we're going to see that this season. We're going to look back on Christine and David and their relationship. And we've already seen their wonderful, beautiful, love, love, love wedding that they had. That was a really amazing wedding and you could just feel the love emanating and the energy there. It was just all good, all love, all peace, all happiness, all joy, all good vibes, all positivity. It was really something to see. And I'm so glad that Christine and David allowed cameras to show viewers what can happen when you take back your life. And now Christine is married to a real man. She's happy, she has a beautiful life, and she's free of Cody, and that is beautiful to see. Cody, of course, is in a very negative state. He's very discouraged about everything, and Robin's trying to be positive. Robin feels there could be a lot of healing this next year coming up, but Cody's very clear that he doesn't think so. Robin thinks, that it's possible in her delusional mind, in her pea brain, that Cody and Janelle could still figure things out. Cody doubts it, but Robin advises Cody to keep 
trying. They don't want to lose their money tree. Janelle makes it clear that she and Cody are not reconciling. She is finding peace over her new life. She doesn't want to get back with Cody. She doesn't miss Cody. And Cody wishes he was in Robin's place because Robin says things are going to look up. She thinks the new year is going to have better things. Robin tries to be positive for Cody, but she's struggling too. Robin doesn't know how to let this go. And she says she committed to this family 100%. She committed all of herself. She was invested. So she really doesn't know how to let go. And Cody tells Robin at this point that he would rather sell the land and start again somewhere else. Robin, of course, doesn't want to talk about it. And she isn't at a point where she's there yet, where she's even willing to discuss it. So Cody really can't talk about reconciliation anymore. He doesn't want to talk about or think about reconciliation with any of his wives, with Janelle, with anyone. And Robin isn't willing to discuss the alternative and the reality of the situation that they're now living in the monogamy. Now, Robin says it's difficult. And there are days where she feels like the idiot, the idiot who doesn't know how to just let it all go. Now, of course, Robin was never all about the family, and these are all bullshit words, and now she just feels the weight of it. She knows she had something to do with the demise of this family, and she doesn't want to take accountability, so she makes it all about how she's the victim, and she's tormented, and she just can't let go. You know, the cost everyone in the family paid for Robin to get Cody all to herself this will weigh on Cody and Robin and their relationship and their peace and their stability and their peace of mind and their happiness. Cody rid himself of his family, who he referred to as the obstacles to his goals in life. He burnt it all down to the ground intentionally in the most destructive, painful, traumatic way for everyone involved. Rather than him being a man and taking accountability and doing things in a way that was considerate of everyone involved. Cody was cruel to his ex-wives, and he was neglectful of his kids. He put himself first. He put his emotions first. He put his ego first, ahead of even his own kids, ahead of their well-being. And Cody's resentment took center stage. Cody made everything about his pain, about his emotions. When his behavior, based on that resentment, got him into this mess, so in my opinion, Cody and Robin will never be able to be truly happy and at peace with each other. They both look miserable and their marriage seems more strained than ever. Inflicting all the pain they did to achieve this monogamish hell, inflicting all of that on this family will ultimately fall back on them and they're going to end up feeling the misery of it. And that's why we see them so miserable. Karma comes for everyone. Now, Cody comes up with something else to blame other than himself. Cody feels that the one house idea, him suggesting the one home idea, that that was selfish. And Robin thinks it wasn't selfish. Cody was a man who just wanted his family together. Now, Cody wonders if he never suggested the one house, if things might be different. He wonders if the one house idea was the catalyst of a realization for everybody especially him. And Cody says all he feels now is cynicism about the entire thing. Janelle is at a place where she mourns the loss of the ideal that they were striving for, this family. And for Janelle, the straw that broke the camel's back was Cody's relationship breaking down with her children. Janelle says Cody really didn't seem like he would move heaven and earth to fix it, so at that point, Janelle knew things were done because that was what was holding her here and that dynamic was now gone and Cody, of course, wasn't willing to make an effort. What I find symbolic is as Robin and Cody are standing on Coyote Pass, there are flies swarming all around just Robin. I thought that was very telling. Now, Cody tells Robin that he really hates spoiling her dreams because, of course, every day when Robin goes to sleep, she dreams of her home on Coyote Pass and Janelle's home and Mary's home and even Christine's. So Cody tells Robin he just hates spoiling her dreams. So he lets her know if she wants, you know, he still has a vision of what their house could be like on Coyote Pass. 
And he says he has visions of what he thought they would build, a vision of being there for everybody, for everything. And now it's all changed. And Cody tells Robin that she is being unrealistic to think that Mary would ever want to live there with them. And Cody's right, of course. I rarely say this, but on that, Cody is right. Mary will never want to live there. And Cody adds that he doesn't know where Mary fits into the family because he says he doesn't fit into the family anymore either. He says he's been fucking excommunicated from his own family. And he even uses the word fucking and they have to bleep it. Now, Cody says he has a marriage and kids with Robin and then he has some relationships with some of his other kids and that's infrequent. So Cody doesn't know what to do with it, but it doesn't feel like a family. At this point, Mary feels like it's fine. She says Cody should go love Robin the best he can, but he needs to be fucking honest with her. And Mary doesn't give a fuck if they bleep her out. She makes it clear. She tells cameras, bleep me out. I don't give a fuck with her new devil may care attitude. And next, we're back in Utah with Christine and Aspen and the kids at McKelty's baby shower. McKelty is pregnant with twins, and she's having a baby shower called a baby sprinkle because this is her second child. So they're throwing this blackjack gambling-themed baby shower for McKelty. Janelle was invited to the party, but she can't make it. Mary was not invited. Mary still hasn't told Janelle or Christine that she and Cody had the breakup conversation and that they're done. Mary doesn't know if they may have heard through the grapevine or not, but she doesn't feel the need to tell them. So McKelty is going to have Cody and Robin come to the shower. And Christine is cool with it. She knows Robin's also probably going to be at the twins' birth because McKelty is close with Robin. Christine is nervous, of course, to see Cody and Robin because it's the first time Christine has seen Robin and Cody since she left. And of course, we flash back to the world's worst acting with the knife in the kidneys bullshit. What an overreach that was. Cody should fire that acting coach. That was horrible. So Cody was furious. And since then, Christine hasn't really talk to Cody and Robin. But of course, if we recall, that's not necessarily true because Christine and Cody did go to lunch after she moved to Utah. So they did see each other, but maybe she hasn't seen Cody with Robin. So Cody says he's really excited to be there to see Tony and McKelty. He and Robin are nervous, of course, because they haven't seen Christine in months. Cody says he can't fake it. He knows seeing Christine there that there's going to be so much animosity. He's going to feel so much animosity. And Cody says he feels embarrassed. He thinks it's really childish, but he feels embarrassed. He feels a lot of animosity. What he should feel is a lot of shame. He should feel a lot of remorse. He should be apologetic. But Cody's never going to get there. Robin points out that she's really nervous to go to the baby shower because she says the last time she saw Christine, Christine told her she didn't want a relationship with her or her kids. I am sick and tired of fucking hearing that lie. It doesn't matter how many times you repeat a lie, it doesn't make it true. Christine never said she didn't want a relationship ever in her life with Robin or her kids. What she said was she just needed space for a while after her newly fresh divorce. She really wasn't in the mood at that point to work on her relationship with Robin or Robin's kids. She just needed some space, which is a normal request, while she was adjusting to her new life. And that's completely understandable. Robin is the one who completely misinterpreted Christine needing space for a time as Christine never wanting to ever see their faces again. Christine has clarified it a million times and Robin continues to run with the lie because she believes in her own delusions and she thinks then that can make her a victim and then Christine will be the mean girl, but really Robin looks like the idiot. Robin's guilt makes her very paranoid. She's always assuming the worst and she's trying to make it true with her bad behavior. Now, Cody is nervous because their divorce hasn't been amicable. He says it's been sad. And Cody is worried, and he hopes that the environment at the shower is going to be warm and friendly to him. So Cody comes in. So Cody and Robin basically keep to themselves. Christine stays on one 
side of the house. They stay on the other. They don't really interact. Nobody says hi to anyone. They just basically ignore each other's presence. Christine's main concern is that the last time she was around Cody a year ago, she didn't feel that that interaction was okay and safe. So she doesn't know how it will go. And she feels anxious around Cody and Robin. She feels unsafe around them. And the reason that Christine tolerates all of this is because of her love for her daughter. This isn't easy for her. And keep in mind, she knows, depending on Cody's mood, you don't know what you're going to get. And so she wants to stay away and avoid and make sure this is very pleasant for her daughters and for the family. Christine knows this is about McKelty. This isn't about her. This is about what McKelty wants. And what McKelty wants is to be one big family again, as unrealistic as that is. So Christine makes it clear that her kids all still want a great relationship with their dad. And Christine makes it clear she wants them to have a great relationship with their dad and with Robin as well. And Christine makes it clear she'll do whatever it takes for that to happen. Robin tries to seem like the victim and she makes it clear that she didn't greet Christine because Christine made it clear that she didn't want a relationship with her. So Robin doesn't want to go say hi to her because Robin doesn't want to push herself on her. You see the junior high attitude and the low maturity level Robin has? Robin says she wants to have any relationship she can with Christine, but it takes two and Christine has to be willing. You know what? In my opinion, it takes accountability too. Is Robin going to apologize to Christine for disrespecting her in her own home, for calling her a liar, for trying to invalidate her marriage experience with Cody? Is Cody going to take accountability with Christine for the way he treated her? When Robin says it takes two, she really needs to look at herself and the behavior of her husband towards Christine and his other children and ask herself, why Christine would ever want a deep relationship with her or Cody or why she would ever trust them considering the way they have treated her and her kids. Christine is staying away from Cody and Robin. She's not even going to say hi to them. She kept her distance because she doesn't want to be fake nice. She says if she were friendly, it would feel disingenuous and she has no intention of being friendly. She just wants to ignore. Now, Cody thinks that now Christine is a good place. She's moved on. And Cody admits that actually he and Robin are struggling in their marriage. And Robin says she and Cody are doing the worst they have ever done in their marriage. And Robin admits the honeymoon is over and it has been really tough between them. Robin says Cody doesn't know who to blame. He doesn't know whether he should blame himself or the other wives. Wouldn't it be healthy for Cody to understand how his own behavior led him here? It would be great for Cody to take accountability instead of blaming his wives. Not only be honest with himself and take accountability with himself first, but also he should take accountability with his ex-wives and his kids. I don't think he'll ever do it, but he should. Now, if Robin really gave a fuck about Cody deeply, she would be encouraging him to take accountability too. Robin adds that Cody is feeling a lot of rejection, so he looks at her wondering if she will reject him too, if she'll be the next one to reject him. So Robin is walking on eggshells. She is on her toes, having to consistently make sure that Cody isn't sabotaging their relationship. Well, you can only manage and manipulate and coddle someone for too long until it gets to be too much. Robin, she says she misses the family experience. She misses the kids. She misses the camaraderie she had with her sister wives. And now with the thing with Mary, things are worse. Things are much harder. So Robin just keeps crossing her fingers that Janelle will decide to stick it out with Cody. Robin complains that there is no resource to help her, especially with the idea that she is married to a man who is also going through three divorces. Cody says he loves Robin. She's dear to him. He respects her dearly. And her validating him, her telling him he is still good, that's valuable to him. And he wants to give it even more credibility than he does, but he has had three other people blame him. Even Robin's validation and praise isn't enough to keep Cody in check, to keep that ego up. 
Next, Cody whines that it's not that easy. He experienced three breakups and he wasn't losing his faith, but he is so angry that now he can't look in the mirror and love himself. He can't go to God to ask him to help through this mess. He prays. He says he does pray, but it's not the same prayers as when he was on his knees, grateful, thanking God for his beautiful family. Cody is a grown ass man. Cody is responsible for his own well being. Cody is responsible for his own healthy mindset. If his mind isn't healthy, it's his responsibility to fix it so that it is. This is on Cody and Cody needs to do the work. You know, Cody also went from gratitude from the perspective of seeing his family as a blessing to referring to his family with resentment as the obstacles to his goals in life. Cody's perspective changed. Cody's blessing became his obstacle. His gratitude soured to resentment. How much did that have to do with Robin encouraging the resentment in Cody? How much did it have to do with Robin whispering in Cody's ear that the rest of the family just doesn't accept her? We see Cody change his perspective early on. He asked long ago what happened to Team Brown. Everything shifted when Cody saw Team Brown as us versus them. When did he see himself and Robin and her kids as separate from the rest of his family? Where did the divide begin? How much of it came from Robin repeating over and over and over, oh, they don't accept us. They're mean. They don't accept us. Man, yeah. Cody did this to himself. Cody gave up his entire family for an empty ego boost from the only wife he has left who ultimately managed and manipulated the fuck out of him while making him believe he wore the pants. And now they are both stuck with each other and they look and seem absolutely miserable. What energy you put out, you get back. And now they both will feel the weight of the hurt they caused with their toxic, selfish behavior. You know, they might have monogamy, but there will be no riding off into the sunset because the price was just too high. At the shower, Christine realized that it was much more awkward for Cody and Robin than it was for her. She realized she is not the outsider here. Cody and Robin are the outsiders. Cody makes it clear he has no intention of seeing Christine. He doesn't want to see her. He doesn't want to talk to her. They just kind of both ignore each other. Now, Cody admits that the divorce has put him in a dark place. And he says he spent a lot of time hearing Christine and Janelle berate him in ways that have challenged his resolve for love of himself. <laughs> Find the world's tiniest violin. The pity me, pity me victim act is so fucking stale. I'm sick and tired of this shit. Is Cody kidding? Seriously, seriously. Cody is whining that Christine and Janelle have trashed him to the point where he has trouble loving himself. When he himself has told Christine things like she was unattractive. He has told Janelle she needed to be more like Robin. She needed to change herself. She needed to become more obedient for the marriage to work. And then he complains that he can't love himself. You know, he struggles because Janelle and Christine tell the truth about him. And he's too weak to pull up his big boy panties and take it like a fucking man and take accountability. Does Cody consider the emotional toll his toxicity has taken on Janelle and Christine for years? What about Mary? What about the way he speaks on her constantly season after season and how that makes her feel? Does Cody know what not making these women feel like they were good enough for years felt like for them being married to him? No matter how hard they tried to bend for this man, it was never enough. Women have said on repeat, there were times they didn't feel like enough. There were times where they didn't feel like they mattered to Cody. Does Cody wonder how his treatment of them might have made them struggle to love themselves or to feel seen? 
You know, when Cody takes accountability for his behavior and how it affected them and how it affected his kids, then, then he can come talk about how hard it is for him to love himself. All because of the truths Janelle and Christine spoke about him that his fragile ego isn't ready to face. Cody said this episode he was ready to pull on his big boy panties. He's still in the pull-ups. This man is a joke. This man, oh, I can't love myself. Oh, it's so hard to love myself. Danelle said this about me. Christine said this about me. Oh, my God. Ah. You know, I wonder how hard it was for these women to feel like they loved themselves when they were married to a man like him. A man who only praises you if you mold yourself to be convenient to him. A man who commends you for blind obedience. Does Cody think his behavior with them inspired all of this self-love within them when they were married to him? These women had to walk on eggshells for years. They had to do emotional gymnastics to stay in their plural situation, married to a man like him with zero self-awareness and very little emotional maturity. They struggled to be able to love themselves. And a lot of the time, Cody added on to that by letting them know the ways in which they weren't good enough. So Cody needs to worry about how he made his women feel instead of complaining that he has trouble loving himself because his ex-wives speak the truth on him. Christina said many times nothing was enough. No matter what, I didn't feel like I mattered to Cody. So, you know, how does that bode for self-love if you don't feel like you matter to your husband, if your husband doesn't validate you? Cody put the viewers, he put his ex-wives, he put his kids through the ringer, and now... He wants to whine, oh, I can't love myself. I can't love myself. He can't love himself. You know, he struggles because Christine and Janelle are a mirror reflecting back to him his own toxic behavior, and they speak on him transparently. Cody can't love himself not because of anything they say or them berating him. Cody can't love himself because of his own behavior. And in my opinion, Cody hates himself deep down and that's on him. That has nothing to do with Christine or Janelle or Mary or anything they say. That's a Cody problem. Cody's love for himself is based on what people think of him, what they say about him. But if Cody truly, truly loved himself at all, he would be self-aware enough to know his faults, to know his strengths, and to love it all, and to be conscious of it all. He'd be comfortable being accountable with his faults and being accountable with who he is. I think Cody is miserable and Cody hates himself. And I think he's very insecure under that fragile ego. And now with everything unraveling and the ex-wives speaking their truth, not only does Cody know people don't see him the way he perceived himself to be, he also gets confronted with his ex-wives calling him out for who he is, calling out his toxic behavior, telling their stories, using their voices, and it's holding a mirror up to Cody, and Cody doesn't like what he sees. Cody's pathetic. Cody is going to continue the woe is me, bullshit crying victim, 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 I'm a victim, like the boy who cried wolf. But maybe instead, Cody should think of the people he victimized because he will never be the victim. If Cody has a problem loving himself because he can't square his ego with the truth of who he is underneath the bullshit, that has nothing to do with his wives talking. The reality is Cody isn't okay with himself. He isn't comfortable in his skin. He isn't comfortable with the Cody Brown he has become. And he would have a problem with himself whether his wives told the truth or sang his praises. Cody knows he's wrong. Cody knows deep down that he's toxic. He probably knows his resentment towards his wives is just him projecting his own self-hatred out on others. But Cody will never admit it. Instead, he wants to make it seem like Janelle and Christine are bullies, hurting his peace of mind, killing his self-love, harming his well-being by using their voices to tell the truth about him when they have every right to. And if Cody can't deal with it, that's his problem. Cody can't face the truth. So instead he cries, pity me, pity me, victim, victim. Oh, they're mean to me. They say mean things. Oh, I can't love myself. It's hard for me. I'm being bullied. But that's not the truth. 
What makes it hard for Cody to love himself is Cody himself. Cody is the problem and Cody knows it. And if Cody can't love himself, it's because of who he is and how he behaves. And no one but him is responsible for his own behavior. No one but him will end up paying the price for it. Cody may have hurt his ex-wives, he may have hurt his kids, he may have burned his family to the ground, but in the end, they're all going to move on, they all have their support system, and they will all move forward, and they will all heal, and they will all build peaceful, happy lives. Cody will be the one left feeling the weight of it for the rest of his life. He will know he brought this on himself, and he has to face himself in that mirror every day. Cody doesn't have a problem loving himself because of anything any of his ex-wives or any of his kids have said. Cody has a problem loving himself because he knows he's a toxic shitbag and he will never allow himself to take accountability. He hates what he sees, so he will perpetually be miserable. He will perpetually struggle to love himself. And that's not in his ex-wives. That's not about anything negative they say about Cody. Cody has to deal with Cody and everything Cody caused. And everything Cody is experiencing is a Cody problem that only Cody can solve. Cody once said he's an enigma only he understands. He is his own worst enemy. And he's still pointing fingers, but eventually the only way left to point will be at himself. Cody goes on to say that if his wives are trashing him to the public, he can't imagine what they're saying to his children. You know what? Cody has to believe in his sick mind that his wives hate him. He has to vilify his family and his mind to be able to live with everything he has done and everything he has lost. All at the hands of himself and his own toxicity. These ex-wives are going to have critical things to say about him, but that doesn't equate to them trashing him. These women have every right to use their voices to speak their truths. If Cody were a real man rather than the coward that he is, he would take this opportunity to take accountability and to address his mistakes. This false narrative that Cody's ex-wives have turned his children against him is utter bullshit. His kids are all mostly adults. They are all intelligent, free-thinking adults, and it's very insulting to them for Cody to assume that they are feeble-minded and weak and easily influenced. And it also invalidates their feelings about their father when Cody assumes all of it is bullshit and manipulation at the hands of the moms. And he assumes it's not actually how his kids feel through thinking for themselves, which is the actual truth. His kids aren't going to want relationships with him if he invalidates that they think and feel for themselves. Cody putting the moms down, Cody blaming the mothers for influencing the kids against him, that's only going to lead to more resentment from the kids, to more resentment from the moms. It would really help for Cody to respect the women as the mothers of his kids. It would help if he validated and respected the way that his kids feel about him. If Cody really wants good relationships, he needs to be the one to do the work and he needs to stop blaming the moms for this false allegation of turning the kids against him. That's delusional, that's paranoid, and all it does is frustrate the kids more with their dad because he refuses to validate their feelings and take accountability, especially when they see him blaming their mothers for his bad relationships with him that they know and he knows are his responsibility. This is all on Cody. These are his adult children. His relationships with his kids are all his responsibility alone. It has nothing to do with the mothers. And Cody needs to stop being a baby. He needs to start being a man. And he keeps talking about big boy panties and he can't even handle his pull-ups. This man is a joke. It's beyond pathetic. He should really feel ashamed of himself. He complains about his mental state, blaming others for why he has trouble loving himself. But Cody should know by now the consequences of his behavior alone are why he hates himself. And he did that to himself with his own hands. You don't get to hurt your whole family, burning it to the ground, without also burning yourself in the process. He became a victim of himself. He victimized himself with his own toxic, shitty behavior. That's his fault. No one else's. And pathetically, like the coward he is, he is still trying to point fingers and the only place he needs to be pointing his grubby hands at is at himself. Cody can be read like a book. 
a while ago, you know, I said this guy will resort to blaming the lifestyle, that it's unfair to women. He's going to blame the lifestyle itself. It's not that Cody, in his mind, was inept at being a husband and father. It's the lifestyle. He complained that it's unfair to women. It's hard on the husband. He complains it wasn't easy for him either. But when is he going to address how hard it was for his children? When does Cody think about his children? Cody can blame the lifestyle. Is it unhealthy? Yes, but it can be lived in a more functional way if everyone involved makes a conscious effort to prioritize a larger family. If the husband does his best to treat all the wives the same, giving as close to equal time and investment across the board as possible, it's able to work in a more functional way. But Cody was manipulative. Cody was selfish. Cody had a favorite wife. Cody was cruel, and Cody refused to live plural marriage in any kind of a way that could have been functional for the family. And when he refused to treat all of his wives and their children the same and invest in them the same, the problem in Cody's plural family wasn't how unfair polygamy is to women inherently or the complexities of that problem. The problem is Cody and the way Cody handled being a father and a husband within his plural family not the polygamous lifestyle itself in this case. Cody blames the lifestyle to take the accountability off of him for having a favorite wife, for prioritizing himself over the larger family, for prioritizing what he wanted over his other wives and kids. And that's on the man, that's on Cody, that's not on the lifestyle. Cody will blame anything and everything and everyone but himself, and the problem is Cody, and Cody refuses to even look at himself in the mirror. Everything Cody feels, everything Cody's experiencing, everything that Cody thinks is happening to him right now, everything in total has sprung from his own hand, from his own behavior, from his words, from his actions. No one did anything to Cody but himself. This guy needs to pull up his big boy panties and stop blaming his ex-wives like the coward that he is. A real man would own it. Christine says she hears Cody say that he thinks she pitted his kids against him. And again, she makes it clear that that's not true, that she does all she can so that her kids can have a good relationship with him. That's very important to Christine. Robin adds that Cody is convinced that he thinks the women talk bad about him to their kids. And Robin says she herself would never badmouth any of the moms to any of the kids ever. Now, Cody says... He's going to this party, he's manic, he has a broken heart, but he's putting up a happy facade for McKelty and for Tony and for the babies, while underneath it all, his heart is breaking. How does Cody think it felt for his wives to have to put on a show for cameras while their hearts were breaking privately? That was their whole life, not just having to put on a happy face for one baby shower. They had to do this while they were raising kids. They had to do this for decades in their marriages to Cody. They had to do this on camera, off camera, every minute of their life. Imagine how heartbreaking that was for them. But Cody's the victim, of course. Everything is always about Cody. To Cody, he never considers anyone else's pain or suffering. Cody's heart is breaking because of his own behavior. And his behavior hurt all of the people around him. And now he wants to be the victim, bitching about his pain, bitching about his heartbreak. What about his kids? What about his ex-wives and all the hurt and disappointment they had to feel on repeat dealing with him and his ego and his moods? Cody mentions that his ex-wives used to sing his praises and now they're berating him. You know, we have to remember when these women sang his praises, they had to bend over backwards. They had to chip away pieces of themselves to become what Cody wanted to please him, to be convenient to him so that he would keep his mood in check. It was never enough. No matter what they did, it was never enough for him. And in return, what did they get from Cody? They would get crumbs from their husband and they knew they had to be convenient. They knew they had to please him so that he would stay invested with the kids to keep him in that decent mood. I'm sure they had to walk on eggshells very often and they probably praised him and it was probably half-hearted just to keep his ego fed, to keep his mood up, like managing a child, coddling that ego keeping his personalities in check. 
Cody's personality issues left these women with little choice. If they wanted to keep Cody invested in the children, if they wanted to keep Cody in a decent mood, they had to praise him. Cody says the praise turned to berating, but Cody really never considers that the women praised him just to appease him, just the way Robin does now to manage him, to appease him, to keep his moods in check. Cody still doesn't get it. That's how little self-awareness and how low emotional maturity this man is. Also, Cody doesn't like what he considers being berated when these women tell their truths about him. But does Cody consider how he berated Mary on repeat season after season and how maybe that might have made her feel? Maybe she struggled to love herself because of the way he put her on blast in such a negative way time after time. Cody was legitimately cruel to Mary. He genuinely berated Mary on a public stage. Cody was very condescending. I mean, remember when he offered to have Mary live in his tool shed as if he was offering her a kindness? For Cody, it's okay for him to berate his family. It's okay for him to berate his wives. But Cody can't take a little of the truth that his wives speak on him and, oh, oh, it makes it so hard for me to love myself. Oh, I can't love myself. And guess what, guys? We should all feel so bad for Cody. But does Cody consider the way he treated Mary? Does Cody consider the way he treated Christine, the way he treated Janelle, the way he treated his kids? Does he consider that maybe it made it hard for all of them to love themselves? Cody berated Mary on a public stage for seasons. Does he ever consider how hard it must have been for her to love herself while she had to listen to that bullshit and toxicity? Now, Christine knows that she should expect to see Robin and Cody in the same space for McKelty's sake in the future. And she's okay with it. She just ignores them. She keeps the peace. Now, Cody says the failure of the experience was everything. All of his goals. Yeah, right? His family are his goals. Oh, everything. But let's not forget that just months before this, his family he referred to as the obstacles to his goals in life. Cody adds that failures happen and he says he will grow up and he will put on his big boy panties. He says he knows he'll get through this. You know what? I don't see any big boy panties anywhere in sight. I still see Cody messing in his pull-ups, taking zero accountability, playing victim. He's still not even past the pull-up stage, but he's talking about big boy panties putting the cart before the horse can't stand Cody. I can't stand this. Oh, pity me, pity me, pity me. Oh, I feel bad for myself. I feel bad for myself. I'm a victim. Oh, feel bad for me. Bullshit. This guy is a victim of himself. He did this to himself and he still, after all of this, isn't at his bottom where he looks up and says, wow, I got to own it. I got to change. And he will never get there. I don't think he will. So Cody, at this point, he's sighing sadly. Oh, he's so sad. Oh, woe is me. As he laments that it was like the dream of Camelot. It was like they had this dream and a whisper might have blown it away. And then they strengthened and they got strong. And then it all fell to shit. And now it's sad to him. He feels sad, guys. He's sad. You know, Cody still doesn't realize he's the hurricane that blew everything down. It's his own behavior that led to this, and he still doesn't own it at all, and it's pathetic seeing him with this woe is me, pity me, pity me bullshit. He feels bad for himself. You know what? Stevie Wonder can see more than this man. This man is so fucking blind. He's past the middle of his life, and he still has no foresight. None. No foresight, no self-awareness, no emotional maturity. Like, this is crazy. So next up, Isabel is moving back to Salt Lake, Utah. She's going to live near Christine. She's going to go to the University of Utah. She's going to live near her siblings. And so Janelle and a very pregnant Maddie are helping Isabel and Christine move back, Isabel, to Utah. So Addie is four months pregnant and she's lifting things like a boss, getting things packed in, helping with this move. Her baby is due in February. So Janelle, we learn at this point, she hasn't seen Cody in months. She really doesn't think about him other than when she thinks about paying off the property. 
And Christina's really worried that Janelle isn't over Cody because they haven't had that big official conversation that ends things completely. So Janelle says she and Cody have had lots of little conversations. She doesn't miss Cody. She hasn't seen him. She doesn't think about him. So Janelle is sure about this, but Christine doubts Janelle's resolve. When Christine first married Cody, she really thought it was going to be forever. And Christine says it just fell apart. And she knows even though it all fell apart, she still has Janelle. So Christine thinks that they are sister wives raising kids together that were part of a plural family. So Christine makes it clear that the kids, they don't have a good relationship with Cody. And not all of the wives have a good relationship with each other. So Christine wouldn't call them a plural family anymore. She would say that she and Janelle have a sister wife family. So during Cody's confessional scene, a producer tells Cody that Janelle and Christine and Maddie are moving Isabel to Salt Lake City. And Cody seems really surprised by it. He acts like he's going to be father of the year as if he gives a fuck, but we all know he doesn't give a fuck. Let's remember, Cody refused to attend Isabel's major surgery. How could we forget? And he also refused to help move Isabel to North Carolina for college. He was citing COVID and the pandemic. He was unsure if gas stations would be open along the way. And he refused to help with that, even though Christine made it clear she was willing to tailor her plans all around Cody, making it convenient for him, really wanting him to get involved and spend that extra quality time with Isabel. And Cody refused to do it. But around that time, Cody was able to do a road trip to attend and officiate at his friend's wedding. COVID be damned, pandemic be damned. And Cody wasn't worried on that long drive to get there, whether the gas stations would be open along the way. Cody went to that wedding. He soaked in the limelight when he easily could have chosen to help his daughter move to college and spend that quality time with her. It was very rude of him. It was very selfish. It was disrespectful to his daughter and to his larger family. And Cody is the one who lost out. Ultimately, Cody lost out on quality time with his daughter, Isabel, that he will never get back. But he had no problem making it to that wedding where he could be there, the center of attention, feeding his ego with not an issue at all standing in his way. Cody always puts himself first. So Cody's filled with resentment. He's laughing cynically at the notion of Janelle helping Christine and Isabel move. And he seems really pissed about it. And Cody says the tables have turned so bad. Cody tries to badmouth Christine and he reveals as if he's revealing some sordid secret that which what we already know Christine didn't want to live in one house and it was because she was always having to walk on eggshells with Janelle and Mary and so Cody's baffled he's dumbfounded by the fact that now Janelle seems to be according to him following Christine around and saying that Christine is so awesome and her life is so great so Cody says that's what it appears to be to him. And he isn't getting the big picture anymore because he isn't involved. But the vibe is that Janelle is really in awe of Christine following Christine around. What it seems to be to me is that Cody feels very threatened, very threatened by Janelle and Christine and by their closeness and how they support each other and how they support the kids together. He seems very threatened by the fact that that part of the family remains close and cohesive as part of what once was. And even without Cody, that part of the family stays intact. So he fears them because he knows that they all know about him. And at any moment, they could choose to really talk. And if they said all they knew about him, Cody knows that that would be really bad for him, in my opinion. And I think he feels very threatened by them. They're strong women. They're beautiful women. They're intelligent women. And Cody hates that. And so Cody wants to make it seem like this is the Christine cult and, oh, Janelle is in the Christine cult and Janelle is just so in awe of her and the kids are so in awe of her. They're so in awe of her life. They just follow her around. They're inducted in the cult as if no one can think for themselves in this group, as if the connection isn't strong, as if the connection there between all of them isn't based on the love and respect that it is. 
Janelle and Christina and the kids all have a strong bond that was built year after year. They have a history together and that will always remain. And Cody hates that. Cody wants to feel like without him, no one in the family stayed together. And he can't handle the fact that the heart of his family still stayed beating, that the kids and Janelle and Christine all stayed supportive of each other. They stayed a unit together. They stayed there for holidays, for events, for family things. They're all there for each other. They're a support system that remained intact without him. And Cody can't handle that. I think that Janelle is happy to see Christine happy and she wants to remain in Christine's orbit. They're close. They build that relationship over years. They raise their kids together. And rather than Cody being appreciative of that, appreciating that his kids have that support system intact to go to, Cody wants to downgrade Janelle and Christine's friendship and their bond. Like, oh, it's just Janelle following Christine around. Oh, Christine hated her guts in the past. Because Cody wants to cause problems. Cody wants to deflect. Cody feels threatened. And Cody thinks he can spin the narrative and create animosity there when really he holds no sway. Now, Cody is very threatened by these two. I've noticed a lot of Cody really wanting pity. There's a lot of self-pity, a lot of poor me, poor me. Oh, I can't love myself. Oh, these women berate me. Poor me, poor me, evil them, bad them, poor me. And there's a lot of Cody assuming that Janelle doesn't think for herself, that the kids don't think for themselves. And Cody has blamed polygamy for being unfair to women and to being unfair to men. This episode, Cody is putting a lot of the blame on the lifestyle itself for why his family imploded. Cody has blamed the wives for turning the kids against him. He blamed the one house thing for being the catalyst for Christine leaving when it had nothing to do with that. And it had everything to do with Cody and his toxic and manipulative behavior as a father and a husband. Cody does a lot of blaming, but the finger is never pointing at himself where it should be. This guy is just as delusional as his shop lady wife. So next up, Mary is in Vegas. She's visiting with her friend, Brandy. Mary doesn't like to visit the cul-de-sac. It makes her sad to go near that area of Vegas. So she stays on the other side of town. And Mary tells Brandy that she and Kotex are officially done. Brandy knows the whole thing has been over for years. She's really glad for Mary. She seems relieved. And Mary says, when Brandy says she is glad, it's another confirmation of, okay, there are people in her life who have felt the same way about Cody, who know how he treats her. And so when she made that decision, all of those people were there for Mary. They were supporting her and they all felt universally the same thing. They all said the same thing. It's about damn time. So Mary has her support system and she deserves that. If Mary were my friend, what I would do is I would throw this woman a party to celebrate. I would be genuinely so happy for Mary if she were my friend. I would be throwing her a party. I would be very excited, very happy for her, very relieved that it's finally over. Very relieved. Mary being done, I mean, that is something that deserves a celebration. And if I were her friend, I would be making sure that Mary celebrated. Oh, Isabel and Christine... And Janelle and Maddie arrive in Vegas to move Isabel into Utah. And McKelty is there to see the family. McKelty is about to birth. She's pregnant with twins at the same time that Maddie is pregnant. So Janelle says that Maddie hasn't had any conversations with her dad. Cody hasn't taken the initiative to call her. Maddie also hasn't called him. Janelle reveals that Maddie also doesn't have a relationship with Robin. And basically, Maddie has written both Cody and Robin off completely. And she set boundaries. And I thought this was awesome. Cody isn't allowed contact unless he can commit to a consistent presence in her life. So unless he can invest and consistently be there, he is not allowed to be in Maddie's life or in her children's lives. I personally think that's awesome. That's the exact way that Maddie should be dealing with this. Maddie knows what she deserves from her father and she knows what her boundaries are and she made that clear. If her father can invest accordingly and he can be consistent, he will have the privilege 
to be in her life. If not, she's going to spare herself the added heartache and she's never going to accept less than she deserves from her father. And I think that's the healthiest way to deal with this relationship. That's exactly how I would handle it. The producer asks Cody to comment on Maddie and Cody refuses to speak at all on Maddie. You know, earlier Cody said he was pulling up his big boy panties, but here he refuses to commit to what his daughter deserves from him. Cody really doesn't seem to understand having a relationship with his kids, having a relationship with his grandkids. It's not a given, it's a privilege. Ultimately, if Cody is only going to be cruel, I really do think it's better that he did do the no comment with Maddie. I don't think Cody is capable of giving his children or his ex-wives, the mother of his kids, his wives, whatever, what they deserve. He's really not. And I don't believe he's mentally at a place where he can even handle himself. Now, Robin doesn't get why Cody isn't reaching out to Maddie, why Cody isn't reaching out to his other kids. Even Robin is saying Cody should be reaching out and he's not. Robin says she knows right now Cody's in a very angry place, he's in a very hurt place, and Robin makes it clear that Cody should be putting effort in, and she also says she feels the kids should be putting in effort too. Robin's not wrong as far as saying that Cody should be putting in the effort. He's the father, he's the adult. Being angry and being hurt isn't an excuse. Cody is very selfish, and Cody's anger and Cody's hurt is more important to him. That takes center stage for him over the hurt he caused his kids with his reckless behavior. His kids should always come first and Cody puts himself and his emotions first, always. McKelty is heartbroken by the current state of her family. She looks back 14 years ago to where Robin first joined the family and she says they were this beautiful, United family together against all odds. They had this family vibe and McKelty says it was amazing and then life went on and it all started to disjoint and now it's really sad. We learn that Maddie is looking at property in Montana to build on and Janelle might actually live with Caleb and Maddie. Flagstaff no longer feels permanent for Janelle and she says if she had another option, she would take it. Cody is very angry. He's very resentful. He's very pissed off that the heart of his family, that Christine and Janelle and their kids have maintained their relationships. They do holidays together. They help each other move. They go to all the big events together. The heart of the family, that nucleus is still there without him, and he's not a part of it at all now because of his toxic behavior. So Cody's bitching that they know that he suffers from FOMO about his family, fear of missing out. So Cody says... Anything they can do that excludes him is a punishment to him. And Cody believes his family is doing this intentionally to him. Cody is paranoid. Cody is delusional. And in my opinion, Cody is a very sick man, allegedly, in my opinion. Cody is a hateful, disgusting individual. And Cody is a coward. Seriously, this guy will never get past messing in his pull-ups. This episode, he's sitting talking about pulling up his big boy panties, yet he's still messing his pull-ups, and he's a hateful, negative prick, and everything is selfish. Cody is cruel, and Cody thinks he is playing everything like a game, tit for tat. And to Cody, his family are his enemies, his opponents. Cody is the type of person who does things to hurt with the intention of hurting others, and he treats people that way. For example, if he's angry at one of his ex-wives, he will neglect the children. And because Cody treats people that way, because Cody punishes people, he expects other people to treat him that way too. Let me give an example. Let's say Cody has a poor relationship with a wife. They have a point of contention. They're fighting. He might take it out on the wife by intentionally hurting and neglecting her kids, dismissing them, distancing from them, ignoring her kids just to hurt her. Now, Cody takes out his anger towards his wives typically through disassociating from his kids. It's very cruel. Cody punishes one for what he perceives as a slight from another. That's how Cody operates. That's how angry and mean and cruel and sadistic and selfish he is. It makes Cody feel like he's in control 
to hurt others, to punish. So Cody assumes people treat him that way, that they operate the same way he does. He is so selfish. He is so cruel. And he perceives the world as if the world turns around him. He's at the center. Cody is at the center of his universe and he thinks everything his family does is calculated. Everything is a war tactic. Everything is against him. Everything's a slight. Everything's a punishment against him. When Cody wasn't even ever considered as part of the equation. Nobody's thinking of Cody. Nobody's intentionally trying to hurt Cody. Cody wasn't even in their minds at all, yet they all live in Cody's mind rent free. Cody's very negative. Cody is very delusional. Cody is very paranoid. In his mind, he thinks that they all sit around and shit talk him and that they're sitting there actively devising ways to get back at him, to conspire against him. When he's the one stewing in the vitriol, they all run around his head rent free all day and he lacks so much self-awareness that he fails to see that not only will they not want anything to do with him because he burned those bridges, but they also pity him. They know in his mind he is miserable. He's not in his right mind. He's not well right now. He is deeply unhappy. They know something is off. They've been saying this for a while. And they all stay away from him. They want nothing to do with him. They know he's not himself. They pity him almost because he's so away from himself. Because they know this isn't the guy they knew. This isn't the guy they loved. And it is so bad that they don't even recognize him anymore. And they ignore him. They pity him. They don't think about him at all. He's the one thinking of them, imagining that they're plotting against him negatively. That's how sick this man is. That's how pathetic and sad this situation is. Cody's family ignores him. They don't want to be anywhere near him. They don't want anything to do with him. They know he's in a bad way. And Cody's the one who is paranoid and delusional and I believe mentally unwell. And he's sitting there imagining that they're scheming and plotting against him. That's how nuts Cody is. That's how sad this situation is now. Cody has really lost it. He is out of touch with reality. He's out of touch with himself. To have this true lack of self-awareness, this deficit well past 50, this is beyond anything I have ever seen. Does Cody know how pathetic it is that he thinks that this is punishment, the FOMO that they inflicted with intention on him? Cody still doesn't get his punishment is that he lost them and he lost them forever. They aren't thinking about him. He doesn't live in their minds rent-free. They aren't plotting and scheming against him. They aren't punishing him. They don't think about him. He doesn't get it. This is ashes now. Cody lost them. He burned the bridge and he still doesn't see it. It is really sad. It is sad beyond pathetic. Cody's nuts. He's nuts allegedly, in my opinion. Christine has fears that Janelle still isn't over Cody and she fears that Janelle is going to move onto the property on Coyote Pass and she worries that Janelle might build her house there and then later Cody and Robin will build there and then Janelle will be stuck there. Christine thinks it's a really bad idea and she worries that Janelle will be stuck there. You know, I trust Janelle and I know there is no way in hell she would stay anywhere near Cody or that she would associate with herself with him in remaining in this marriage. But I get that Janelle has a past history of leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. And Christine isn't sure. Christine isn't secure in the fact that Janelle is going to pick her own happiness. And Christine is worried Janelle will get stuck on Coyote Pass and she won't be happy and she's going to stay stuck. And Christine doesn't want Janelle to feel stuck. But I know and I feel that Janelle is done. Now, back in Vegas, Mary tells her friend how on her anniversary this year, she went out with Cody and it was their 32nd anniversary. Mary makes it clear, 32 years is a long time. She has been married a very long time, but they haven't lived like a married couple for 32 years. Mary says she stayed committed for 32 years and she makes a joke that maybe she should be committed for being committed that long. You know, I'm glad that Mary can laugh at this. 
Mary says that she and Cody, they drove around, they talked on that 32nd anniversary, and Cody was alluding to the fact that he never loved her, and he felt like he had to marry her, as if it was an obligation. So Mary told Cody that she knows he loved her at some point, and Cody told Mary he never loved her, he was just affirming that he loved her back then, trying to find an affirmant. Now, Mary can't understand this. She says when a single man meets a single woman, she doesn't get why that man would choose to marry her just to affirm and force a love for her when he actually didn't love her. My question to Mary would be, well, what was Cody getting out of it? Because in my opinion, Cody isn't capable of love the way most people are capable of love in a relationship. Cody is getting something out of it every time he marries these women. It's not that he's marrying them out of love for them. He's marrying them because he's getting something out of it. With Christine, he got status. With Mary, her family was involved in the church. With Janelle, he was getting someone with a lot of ambition and work ethic and a money tree who was responsible. So I believe Cody marries people based on opportunity and what he is getting out of the situation. It's not out of actual love that he feels for that woman. My guess is with Mary, Cody loved getting his ego fed much more than he loved Mary. He loved the love that Mary was giving him. Mary was very into Cody and Cody accepted it. And Cody probably made Mary feel like he did love her. Cody says that Mary has her little accusations now. And Mary points out how cruel it is to pick her out of a crowd to try and force himself to love her for the next 32 years, knowing she loved him and he didn't really love her. He just picked her and said, well, I'll try to love that one. Mary doesn't get how Cody could do that. And Cody says Mary can say whatever she wants. He just isn't going to comment on it at all. And Mary says Cody told her he didn't love her, that that's what he did, that he just picked someone and said, I'll try to love her. Now, I think Cody is telling Mary the truth as far as I don't think Cody loves anyone. I don't think he really loved Mary. I think he loved getting his ego fed and he loved the love that Mary was giving him, but I don't think he loved Mary. I don't think Cody loves anyone, least of all himself. And I really don't think Cody is capable of love the way most people are. I think everything is about feeding his ego and what he is getting out of the situation. I don't think it's about love or him loving the other person or him having love for that other person. He loves what they offer him. And when he is done taking all he can, he's done. And by then it becomes inconvenient and then Cody hates that. Cody might be able to charm a woman and say the right words and become a chameleon, molding himself to whoever he chooses to make her think he offers her what she is looking for and that he loves her. But for Cody, in my opinion, it's about what he gets out of it for him and for his ego. It's not about love. I really don't think Cody is capable of loving others. I don't even think Cody loves himself. Mary says she knows how Cody acts, she knows the things he has said for years, and she admits they haven't had a relationship for a long time, and ever since they moved to Flagstaff, when they moved to Flagstaff, Cody was giving her a lot of false hope. She says Cody said it was a great time for a new beginning, he seemed positive about the relationship, he seemed positive about working on things, he made it seem like he was going to make an effort, and then it went downhill. And Overall, Mary really just feels sad for Cody. She feels sad for Cody if he has to tell himself all of these things that he never really loved her to justify that he and Mary started this family. So Mary wonders why Cody does that. She says it makes no sense to her if he's trying to invalidate his old family and justify this new family he's made with Robin because Robin was 10 at the time, or maybe 12 at the time, when Cody married Mary. So Mary is suggesting that Cody wants to completely rewrite history because he wants to believe he is where he has always belonged. He is where he is meant to be with Robin and their kids, and everything else was just a mistake, and Cody never loved them, and that's Cody's way of coping with this. But at the time Cody started his family with Mary, this plural family, Mary wants to point out Robin was still maybe in elementary school. 
So it never would have been in the first place. So Cody is really reaching and really trying to rewrite history to try and justify himself, to try and make himself feel better when it really makes no sense. And Mary's at a loss to really understand this. Mary's friend feels that Cody is having a super weird midlife crisis. You know what? He's been having this midlife crisis for over a decade and he still won't ax that hair. The midlife crisis is still going strong and Mary agrees. Mary's friend points out that Cody has always been Cody, but he used to be kinder to Mary and she hasn't seen Cody really try for years. So Mary agrees and Mary makes it clear she felt this way for a very long time that Cody has said these things to push her out intentionally because if he can push her out and she leaves, then he isn't the bad guy because he wasn't the one to walk away. Mary's right about that. She's spot on. Cody did that with Mary. He did that with Janelle and he did that with Christine. He did all he could to push these women away intentionally so that he could play the victim and say, they left me. I'm not the one who ended things because Cody is a coward. He would rather be cruel. He would rather hurt people till they're running for their lives, till they're running from him. And then he can blame them and say, well, you left me. It's not on me because Cody is a toddler and he's still messing in his pull-ups and he just can't fit in those big boy panties. He just can't quite get them on. He's not potty trained yet. So Mary's friend knows Robin was the most upset with Mary leaving and that Mary had to be the one to comfort her. And Robin says, it feels like everything is falling apart and she is trying so hard to remain hopeful. She says it feels like she's in an alternate reality and she doesn't know how to wrap her brain around what's happened. She doesn't know how to let go. You know what? If she wants to wrap her brain around what's happened, why doesn't she start by taking accountability? Now, Christine wishes Robin would just let Mary go, that Mary can live her life since Cody let Mary go years ago. Mary admits that she knows Cody is going to be pissed about her confessional scenes, but Mary is done giving a fuck. Mary says she doesn't give a flying rat's ass and she's not here to play. Mary came in camo. She's done with the games. Mary is down to try to tell it like it is. Mary is still trying to figure out what comes next in her life. She's not going to renew her lease in Flagstaff. She is going to live at the bed and breakfast. Mary's friend is relieved because she says Mary, as her friend, she hasn't gotten what she needs in that relationship with Cody for years. Mary is heartbroken because she says 32 years ago, she didn't sign up for this. And Mary says Cody keeps telling her polygamy isn't fair to women. And her friend points out that that's not the Cody she knows. And Mary says a lot of people would say this isn't the Cody they know. Cody has changed. Now, Mary admits that she knows Cody doesn't actually give a fuck that polygamy is unfair to women. Mary knows that Cody is making excuses to avoid his own accountability here. I have to say, I love what Mary said here. She said maybe Cody isn't being fair to women, but it's not polygamy that it's unfair to women. But in this situation, it's Cody who was unfair to the women. And I believe that's true here. Cody is blaming the lifestyle for being unfair to women when we all know it was Cody who was unfair to his wives. It was him who picked a favorite wife. It was him who made polygamy more unfair. He magnified the issues. He made it more toxic. He made it more unhealthy, more dysfunctional. And that's on him and how he functioned as a father and a husband within his plural marriage. That is not on polygamy and the lifestyle itself. Now, Cody is baffled. Cody says, Mary says, maybe he was unfair. And Cody says, it's just as unfair to him because he didn't have a choice to get out and all of the women have that choice. Cody knew, in my opinion, a long time ago that he wanted out. And he also knew he can't be the one to leave the plural marriage. So I have always said this. He intentionally pushed each wife to her breaking point to leave so he could have his monogamy with Robin. And he caused more hurt to the mothers of his kids and to his kids 
with that toxic behavior, with pushing them out, than he would have by being a man, by pulling up his big boy panties, by being honest with all of them about what he wanted. And I think it would have caused less hurt within the family. It would have caused much less pain. But Cody had zero intentions of putting any effort in to keeping any of those relationships. Cody prefers convenience and Cody doesn't give a fuck if he hurts anybody. So Cody would prefer to burn it all to the ground rather than making any effort to pr at least preserve the relationships and separate the family in a healthy way. Cody does not love truly. So he doesn't give a fuck about the pain he causes. Cody doesn't have empathy. Cody does for himself and himself alone. He doesn't give a fuck about the women. He doesn't give a fuck about the kids and how they feel. He doesn't give a fuck about what's fair. He doesn't give a fuck about the collateral damage in the process of him getting what he wants. And he still thinks he can say, oh, well, I wasn't the one who quit. I'm the victim. They all left me. A man who wasn't a coward would be honest and leave and do everything with dignity rather than being abusive and cruel to intentionally alienate these women and children. Cody didn't give two fucks about how fair he was to anybody. He didn't give a fuck about how healthy this was for anybody. He didn't consider the well-being of his ex-wives, the mothers of his kids or his kids because Cody is a piece of shit and it was easier for him to burn it all to the ground. But now he's going to feel the misery and the consequences and the karma of that for the rest of his life. Mary explains that even though she got the legal divorce, she still considered herself married to Cody spiritually. And she says if she didn't consider herself married after she divorced Cody legally, then that would make all the other marriages null and void. So she wonders what they were doing all of these years. So Mary explains that the spiritual marriage is a thing for them and to Mary that was very important. So Mary is upset with how she was treated for the last 10 or 12 years with Cody's lack of communication about how he really felt, about what he wanted, what he didn't want, and she is upset with the story Cody has told for all of these years, with the lies that he's told on the show. And Mary feels it was all disingenuous. They flash back to season one to Cody Brown saying, Hi, my name is Cody Brown. I'm a polygamist, but we aren't the polygamists you think you know. And he goes on that he has three awesome wives, Mary, Janelle, and Christine, and he has 12 wonderful children. And he adds that love should be multiplied, not divided. Mary says she is upset about all of this, and she says it's unfair to her. It's unfair to anybody in the family. It's unfair to anybody watching their story. I have to say, I appreciate that Mary is admitting it was a lie and that it's unfair to everyone, the family, the wives, the kids, and to the viewers included. You know, Cody looks more miserable than ever, and there is fear in his eyes. This man is scared, and I think Cody knows. If these women were ever to really let loose, if they were ever really to tell all, even the devil himself might reject him, and I think Cody knows that. At this point, Mary intends to still get her parcel of land, and Christine, of course, signed her parcel over to the family. She was done, and she hopes Janelle and Mary get their fair share of the land, but she suspects they won't be getting their fair share because she knows Cody, she knows how he works, and she doesn't think they will get their fair share. She doesn't think Cody will do the right thing, and it frustrates her to think about it. At this point, Mary isn't really communicating with Janelle and Christine, so Mary doesn't know what's going on with Janelle. Mary's friend wonders if Robin will leave Cody. And Mary says this isn't what Robin wanted. Mary makes it clear that she doesn't believe that Robin has a bad heart. But Mary knows that lots of people in the family and otherwise think that Robin has a bad heart. And Mary says it's been hard. She and Robin, they were close in the beginning. And Mary knows Robin always had her back. Robin was always supportive. But now the relationship just is what it is. And she says Robin and Cody will just have to figure out a way to live together. And they will have to figure out a way to live with everything. Frankly, I don't know how they sleep at night. Mary's friend thinks Mary is letting Cody off way too easy. Mary says she has her moments of anger. But 
she isn't going to be a jerk. She isn't going to say mean things about Cody, even though sometimes she might feel them. And Mary's friend advises her not to let Cody suppress her anymore. Mary considers all the years that they weren't together when they were technically married, but they weren't together as man and wife. And she still has all those 30 years of memories, the pictures, the things on the wall, the wedding gifts from her grandma, all the sentimental things, the Christmas ornaments. And Mary wonders what she should do with everything. Now, what I would do is burn it, but Mary is very sentimental. If I were her, I would put it in a box and save it for Leo and save it for their kids one day and just move forward. Mary feels like she still needs to grieve this for a bit longer. And she says, if she were to put a Christmas card out this year, for example, with just her this year, she would feel like she would seem like she was flaunting, that she was single, like, oh, look, I'm so happy. I'm so excited for this. Yay, look at my life. But for her, she doesn't feel that. For her, the breakup of her marriage, the breakup of her family, it's just not something to celebrate. She still has to grieve it. And Christine, at this point, she doesn't know where Mary and Cody stand. She says she loves being single right now. She loves her life now more than she ever loved her life before. And she wishes that same happiness for Mary and Janelle. She really wants them to love their lives. Mary's friend tells Mary that she doesn't think Mary understands how good it could be. And she makes it clear that her husband would never say to her the things Cody said to Mary. And she adds that for 32 years, Mary put up with something that she did not deserve. Cody didn't deserve her, and now she is free. So she wonders if Cody will wake up one day and wonder, what did I do? if he'll realize he just threw it all away. And Mary says she knows who she is, she is happy with who she is, she is confident in who she is, and she is gonna be moving forward with this great life. And she says, if Cody is happy with this, good. She is glad that he is happy with it, but she suspects that Brandy, her friend, is not wrong. That one day Cody will wake up and think, wow, what the hell did I just do? Mary says on that day, Cody will be accountable for that, whether he likes it or not. I really wish Mary, Janelle, Christine, and all the kids to have beautiful, peaceful, joyous lives filled with love, filled with laughter, and filled with everything good. They deserve it. Karma comes for everyone, and at the end of the day, Cody will end up alone. He will end up old. He'll be a miserable bag of bones. He'll be sitting on Coyote Pass, this withered bag of bones, and he's going to call his kids. He'll call Maddie. He'll call his ex-wives, and he will get no answer. And by that time, there will be no time left. And then, and only then, will Cody feel the weight of his toxicity. I really hope for all of Cody's kids and ex-wives to have all the peace and all of the love and all the happiness they deserve. Cody is going to stew in his misery until the day he stops blaming shadows and he starts looking in the mirror, blaming himself. Cody caused this. Cody burnt his family to the ground. Cody did this to himself. Everyone will move forward. Everyone will find their joy and their peace. And Cody will just have his misery to keep him company. Just wait and see. That does it for this episode. I'll be back next week with Sister Wives Season 19, Episode 2, Let There Be Light. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye.